yesterday that I saw that tweet on Twitter and um, I decided to follow the thread and I read through, read the many responses and guys, I was simply baffled. I was baffled. You know when something does not really make sense like that? Guys, I was just trying to make it make sense, but it was not even working at all. Like, how does Big Brother Niger affect the the seriousness, affect... I don't understand. A show that is... Is it how many months away from the 2023 elections? How does the show affect the 2023 elections? Guys, please make it make sense, because... I don't understand. Let's let's go over the tweet again because guys, I read and reread that tweet and okay, let me let me just read it. So, it says, "My appeal to Ebuka and Bibi Ninja is to suspend the reality TV show until after the 2023 general elections. The youth of Nigeria need to focus on the next election." Our focus and advocacy now is how to get millions of youths to register and collect their PVCs. Big Brother, help us. Um, <laughs> the person goes to wrote, A work in Nigeria works for everybody. People and businesses will thrive. Nigerians will genuinely have a sense of ownership in the Nigeria project. But if my appeal is just too much for the show owners, perhaps PVC or election themed show might help. We have to think out of the box. For real, I have a whole lot to say about this. But before I continue, let me first of all welcome all of you back to my YouTube channel. You're welcome back. My name is Glory Elijah. This is Frankly Speaking with Glory, and I am the girl with the tea. Yes, like literally, and of course, in my tea cup. And um, if this is your first time stopping by this channel, you're absolutely welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to become a part of this family. This is where I give the most detailed, accurate, factual analysis of reality TV shows, movies, and trending topics. And today of all days, guys, I was going to review a movie. Yes, I saw two amazing movies over the weekend. I was super enthusiastic about reviewing those movies today, but then I took a trip down the streets of Twitter where I came across this very, very triggering offensive tweet i call it that because it actually triggered a lot of emotions in me and i thought you know what i cannot sweep this under the carpet i totally need to talk about this and i also know that the bulk of you on my channel you are lovers of reality tv shows and so i thought you might find this conversation very interesting and so the first question of this video is is big brother ninja as a reality tv show hindering the success or the progress of or the participation of the youths in the Nigerian elections generally, all right? I'm not just talking about the 2023 elections now, but generally in this country. And also you can um, refer that same question to how it's been going on in other countries around the world, right? There's Big Brother Canada, there's Big Brother South Africa, there's Big Brother USA, there's Big Brother, I think Big Brother UK, I don't know if it still holds, but there's Big Brother Australia, there's big brother happening in different countries around the world, right? So has the show been affecting youth participation in the elections of those countries? What is your take? Are you for, you know, this person's request that the show should be suspended until after elections? What is your stand? The first things that came to my mind when I first came across these tweets was that whoever is behind this Twitter handle hmm, that tweeted these, this thing, was very, very insensitive and selfish. And the reason I thought so is because this person sat down or stood or laid down or did whatever, took whatever posture they deemed fit to take whilst tweeting this without even thinking that Big Brother Niger is not a show that falls from the sky and lands on all our gadgets for us to view. Mm -mm. Big Brother Niger is not a show that just happens. It's a show that is possible to view on any gadget that you have because of the efforts of the multitude of individuals that have been employed to work on the production of that show. Guys, I don't even know what better way to put it but to say that hundreds of people if not thousands 
are employed for every season of Big Brother Niger to ensure the smooth production, the smooth running, and the smooth delivery, the success of that show, inclusive of the Ebuka that this person is actually tagging on this tweet. Ebuka is an employee under multi-choice. Ebuka is employed. Yes, Ebuka does not own Big Brother Niger. Ebuka is just, how do they put it here, a microcosm of the franchise. So he's being paid, he's earning a living. And who is Ebuka? Ebuka is not just a celebrity. Ebuka is not just the host of the show. Ebuka is a married man. Ebuka is a family man. Ebuka has two kids. In case this person does not know, Ebuka has mouth to feed. God, English fails me this day. Ebuka has people he is feeding. Likewise, the many people, likewise the Kayo day that we're always screaming about. Kayo day, oh, put the camera angle here and there. There are people that are employed. And when I talk about people that are employed to work on the show for every year that it happens, I'm not talking about the sophisticated executive that sits in the office and throws orders around. I'm talking about people that actually do manual labor, people that run on their two feet to ensure that things happen. Guys, I was there, yes, when I was um, invited for the Show Max conversation. I was there and I had the privilege of doing a mini tour around the premises of that environment. You need to see the hustle and bustle. People were busy. There was nobody that was standing and, you know, just being laid back. So imagine, right, that the show was suspended for the next one year just because of this person's sentimental disposition on Twitter, right? What is going to happen to the thousands or should I say hundreds of people that are employed? Should they should go and sit home, Abby, and chop sand or maybe better still open their mouth for natural air that God has actually so freely given, right? Open their mouth for the air to enter uh, so that they will stay alive and wait from, from now till after elections that's to happen in probably february or april right oh wait till that time before they now get back to work before they are now re-employed that is if their jobs are still waiting for them come on nigerians we should try and be very very sensitive when putting out certain thoughts online and guys do you know what really pissed me off about this person's tweet this person is actually a freaking twitter influencer this is one of those people that if they cough you will see hundreds of likes, you see people retweeting, you see people just liking it. And that's one of the dangers of people being influencers. You have to be very careful about the kind of things you put out, the kind of thoughts you put out there. That was just very, very insensitive. Yes, I mean, the person actually did well by, you know, adding to that tweet thread different um, centers where people can get their pvcs which was actually the good thing to do and then in the next tweet that the person put out there the person said that um a pvc or election themed show might help which also makes sense yes i mean if that person had actually put out that tweet from that angle of advising the organizers of the show to ensure that most of the tasks that will be uh, probably done in the house if the show is to have another season right has the theme of getting um, uh, of encouraging youths to get their pvcs you know to participate in the coming elections i think that would have actually really made sense but then going as far as preferring as a solution a ridiculous solution that the show be suspended just for the elections to happen just for youths to be focused i'm like is this person actually living in this world at all does this person realize that for every year when BB Niger is airing, there's also this thing. Is it Champions League or Premier League? Guys, I'm not really a sports fan, but for those of you that are sports fan, you also attest to the fact that at that same time, there's a sports tournament happening. And the same population, maybe not the same percentage of the youthful population watching BB Niger, but also at least to some extent, people are also watching sports. People are also fully engrossed. And there's a lot of things happening. It was just ridiculously laughable that this person is a social media user, an active social media user, and still does not see the glaring reality that even without Big Brother Niger, anybody, not just the Nigerian youth now, but anybody, absolutely anybody, can be distracted by anything and at any point in time. Okay, take for instance, right now, 
Big Brother Niger is not airing, right? But there are so many distractions out there. Talk about, oh, uh, movies coming out, series here and there, there's Netflix. Guys, there's a lot of things that's actually distracting even the Nigerian youth. And any youth that decides not to get their PVC and to participate in the coming election, guys, how is that the problem? How is that the fault of the organizers of Big Brother Niger? How exactly? Does this person realize that Big Brother Niger is not only a business venture for the organizers, but also an avenue for brands, for business owners to grow their businesses, to leverage on, to get more awareness, to create more publicity for their products and services. Does this person really understand the economics involved in just one show? Um, should I say growing, elevating hundreds of businesses? Individuals also involved in participating as housemates. Does this person really understand all of that mathematics, right? Okay, let's even do the maths. Let's even do the proper maths on this. The first question that we should be asking is what is the exact population of the Nigerian youth? That's the first question. The second question is, is it the entire population of the Nigerian youth that actually watches Big Brother Niger? And people forget that the fact that you see 1,000 people on Twitter, the fact that you see 1,000 people, maybe 100,000 people um, tweeting or trending Big Brother Niger, it does not mean that it is actually that 1,000 people that's actually putting out that tweet. They forget that there's a principle of numbers, a multiplication of numbers. I alone, I can possibly put out maybe 20 tweets about the show and it counts as the numbers of the trends of that particular show. Guys, these people do not even do all of these calculations and they also think or assume that it is the entire population of the Nigerian youth that actually has access to social media, that has access to um, watching Big Brother Niger. They forget that there are also those people that are stuck up in the, in the rural areas, you know, people that are stuck up in areas where they do not have access to even network service. So what is this person in particular doing to reach out to those youths in those interior areas? Oh, because you see people on social media, you think that the people on social media count only as the entire population of the Nigerian youth. Do these people even think at all? Or you think the entire body of Nigerians is, you know, are the ones on social media, at the net seasons, like for real? Is this person even thinking at all? I mean, this Twitter user did well by posting the locations of PVC collection areas all across Nigeria, which is actually a good thing. But then another question we should be asking is, is it the entire population of the Nigerian youth that has access to that information that that person posted on Twitter? And this person also forgets that it is not the entire Nigerian population, uh, Nigerian youth population that use Twitter. So fine, this person is doing the learned work on Twitter only, right? What is the person doing physically? Is the person walking, right? Is the person going physically to engage the Nigerian youth to sensitize them on the need to participate in the coming elections? Is this person forming a group that is going into those interior areas of the country to, to educate youth on the need to participate in the coming elections? I mean, it's really exhausting the way Nigerians enjoy playing the blame game. Now it's like using Big Brother Niger as uh, organizers as the scapegoat to you know to to claim that oh it is because of the show that Nigerian youths are losing focus. Seriously, man, and you are on social media. You see the madness that's happening every day. You see the the, the challenges that this country is dealing with. Do you even really know what happens during elections? Do you know that people, whether they have their PVC or not, people are really scared of even going out to cast their votes. Why? Because they are scared. They are scared of hoodlums. What is this person, the likes of this person, doing about it? Are you sensitizing those youths that potentially will be turned into election touts, you know, to disrupt the election processes on the day of the election? Are you even doing anything about that? No. But your problem is the organizers of Big Brother Niger. If you have any bias against the show, then swallow your bias and then look for other possible solutions. Instead of packing all in one tweet or two tweets your bias against the show. Because as far as I'm concerned, even though there's a frenzy, there's excitement when the show airs, 
I do not think that Big Brother Nigeria is the reason why youth will lose focus during the 2023 elections. Any youth that wants to vote, trust me, they will go out and vote. Trust me, they will go out and vote. I have seen where grown adults are scared of going out to vote during the elections. People are scared. So what are you doing about that? And it turned out that I wasn't the only person that had the same sentiment, you know, towards that tweet. I saw some um, responses to the tweets. I'm just going to go ahead and read out some of them. Um, this one is from Winners Avenue. This one said, maybe we should all suspend our jobs, stop schooling, stop eating, and focus on elections that politicians will read in broad daylight without us doing anything about it since we all have become stupid not to realize that elections will hold next year and voting done in one day. Um, this person said, then we deserve all the rubbish we get if the youth of Nigeria cannot mentally multitask spot on. I've never heard this sort of reasoning. An entertainment show should be suspended because there's a general election and the youth of Nigeria are incapable of doing more than one thing at a time. Spot on. Honestly, guys, and this person is so right. I felt like that tweet was also very, very insulting to the Nigerian youth, to the average Nigerian youth. It's like saying that the average Nigerian youth's mind or brain does not have the capacity to handle different tasks at the same time. So, oh, because you want to get married now, for instance, stop going to work, stop going to church, stay indoors and, you know, do what they call Mbopo, <laughs> get fat and wait it out. Like everything must stand still. Come on, come on, we are not that dumb. Nigerian youths are not that dumb. I believe strongly that if this person that took out this kind of time and energy to put out this ridiculous tweet, took out the same energy to physically, not just online, no, because we're not talking about online warriors now, but to also, just as much as they're doing online, to also physically sensitize the average Nigerian youth, even the ones that are hawking bread and gala on the road, eh, to go and register for their PVCs, get their PVCs, and also physically participate in the Nigerian election. Trust me, I believe things will really, really go fully well. And I'm sure that Nigerian youths are very, very smart and not dumb, as this person is actually insinuating this ridiculous, offensive tweet. Listen, this is where I'm going to hold my peace because, guys, I could do like a whole long one-hour conversation about this. Yes, but I'm just going to hold my peace and let you all let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. What is your take? What is your stand? Are you for or against this particular request that this person made or this particular insinuation that this person made from their tweets um, just let me know in the comment section below i'll see you guys on another episode of frankly speaking with gloria elijah have an amazing day bye